Hello and welcome back to Rewriting History on Football Manager 2023, the series where we take charge of a club from the past season and try to rewrite their history. So we've already taken charge of Southampton and tried to secure their safety in the Premier League with six games to go. We're using a, a real results mod that someone has kindly created. The link to that is in the description down below if you want to have a go at yourself with real life results. But in today's episode, we're going to kick off a brand new mini save. We are taking charge of Borussia Dortmund with five games left of the Bundesliga campaign. So the way this will work is we'll do we'll, probably, we'll do two matches in this first episode, then we we'll play the final three games of the season in the next episode. And at the end of each episode, we will take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of how we're doing as Dortmund manager compared to how the real-life Dortmund team were doing at that match day. So at the start of our save with five games to go, Dortmund were, were looking pretty good. We're, we, we're a point clear of FC Bayern and we've got five games to go. So all we need to do is make sure that we either match or better Bayern's results. Surely it can't be that difficult. Now I'm really enjoying making this series so far. The Southampton save was fun, if not a bit stressful. I'm sure the Dortmund one is going to be very fun as well. If you're enjoying these as well and you like the idea of them, please hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're having a go at any of these saves yourself or anything similar using the real results mod. I'd be very interested to know. But let's crack on with our time with Dortmund. So we're here for our first game in charge of Dortmund. It's away from home against Bochum. And we, like I said, we just need to do better or the equivalent of what Bayern do in their games. Obviously, we're playing first this game week so we can put a, a bit of a standard down for, for Bayern to try and, to try and catch us. So the tactic and formation that we are going to do is a 4-2-3-1 Gegen Press. This is our initial tactic. There are some other ones that we might need to use further down the line. We've got a 4-3-3 and a 4-5-1 with like a flat 5 in the middle of midfield. But they're all Gegen Press and this is the one that we're going with for this first game away from home against Bochum. So in goal, we've got Gregor Kobel, who's been Dortmund's first choice goalkeeper all season. We've got Julian Ryerson, who I naively did not know in my... Celtic manager FM predicts episode. In a central defence, we've got Niklas Sewell alongside Nico Schlotterbeck at left back. I was originally, well, I did originally have Rafael Guerrero there, but he has picked up an injury, so he isn't going to be able to play. I'm not sure how long he's out for. He's out for 5 to 11 days, got a pulled thigh, so unfortunate for him. But Felix Paslak comes in at left back for him. In centre midfield, we've got Bellingham as a box to box midfielder alongside Emery Chan as a ball winning midfielder. We've got Julian Brandt in attacking centre midfield as well. Karim Adeyemi is at right wing. Daniel Marlin is at left wing. Although, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, that he normally plays at right wing, but on the game he's listed as a left winger. I might have misread that, I'm not sure. And then up front, we've got Sebastian Haller playing as a pressing forward on attack. So, like I said, this one is, we're in a much better position in this one compared to the Southampton save where we tried to save them from relegation. They were very, very much adrift and with a, a terrible side. Dortmund are, as we start here, top of the table by a point and should really be going on to win. So in real life, this game ended in a 1-1 draw. So drop points for Dortmund, some key drop points given that they lost the league title by just the two points come the end of the season. So ideally, if we can better the real-life result for Dortmund in this game, we're looking pretty good for the league title as Brandt has the ball through to Marlin. It's Marlin with the shot, and Daniel Marlin has got us off the mark. It's 1-0 after just under half an hour. Bochum have been all over us for the opening half an hour or so, but we have got them on the counter-attack. It was Julian Ryerson who found Adeyemi. Adeyemi with a little bit of a run forward to Brandt, through ball from him to Marlin, and Marlin with a great finish past the Bochum goalkeeper to make it 1-0. Heinz back to Danilo Suarez. It's blocked, but it's going to fall back to Heinz. And that is a misplaced pass. They almost got away with it, but Adeyemi pounces on it and brings the ball forward for us. It's Emery Chan now in the centre of the field. Bad pass from him. Lucilla gets it back for Bochum. Now Forster with the ball. It's back to goal, though. He has to go all the way back to Schlotterbeck. Now Odette's at right back. Back to Schlotterbeck. One touch passing from the Bochum defenders. Are they going to get themselves into trouble or are they going to create something? It looks like they might do the latter. It's Janko with the cross in. It's Hoffman with the header and it's headed just wide. Paslak in a little bit of space on the left-hand side. He's going to have to go back, I think, though, to Schlotterbeck. And Schlotterbeck with a bad touch to Sarno. 
Fortunately, Sewell was awake there to the danger and intercepts brilliantly. Now Adeyemi on the ball. Long ball from him to Marlin. He's got one already. It's Marlin. Brings the ball down nicely. He's in the box now. Gets a ball in. To the edge of the box. It's Bellingham and it's just over the bar with the volley from Jude Bellingham. Yanko with a throw in. Gets it back from Asano. Now Lucilla for Bochum. Odette to Goralski. Odette wants more through ball from him to Lucilla. This could be a chance for the equaliser. It's Forster. Philip Forster. He was a, a very, very nice moustache there, the, the, the Bochum player. But um, it's one all, so we're, we're back level. It is the scoreline that it ended on in real life. And it's it's not ideal, but Bochum do seem to have had the better of the game so far. So half time, and we've just managed to have a few more shots than Bochum in the, the back end of that half. But a pretty even game, both around the 0.5 XG mark. And, I mean, ideally we'd, we'd win this one, as this was one that they didn't win in real life, but... Let's see what we can do. So I was going to take Paslak off, but I've just done a bit of research because I thought it was a bit odd that this player hadn't played any game times for Dortmund this season. And there's a reason behind that. So he's been accused of domestic violence. Therefore, I'm not going to bring him on. And he's he's not going to be in any of my squads moving forward. Um, Paslak's going to stay on the field. We're just going to keep that guy out of our mind. We're not even going to think about him. And yeah didn't realise that that was a thing. What we're going to do instead is we're going to move Schlotterbeck to left back. Paslak's coming off. Mats Hummels is coming on. Free kick. Brand to take it. He plays it short to Marlin. Marlin on the right-hand side now. Can he get a ball in? He's fouled, I think, by Odette. That might have been in the box, but I'm pretty sure it was on the edge. It's going to go to VAR to check for a possible penalty, but I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that is going to be a, a free kick. No penalty. As expected. Another free kick, though, in a, a decent position for us. And it's Brandt to take it once again. To the back post. Haller's there, but it's headed over Yanko. Now Bellingham on the edge of the box to Marlin. And I feel like this chance may have gone for us. It has indeed. But there's another free kick. It's Julian Brandt once again to take it. It's headed away by Schlotterbeck. Now Bellingham is going to get the ball back for Dortmund. And Hummels with it on the left-hand side. Ball across to Brandt. Brandt with the volley. And what a goal from Julian Brandt. What a finish on the volley. Great ball across from Mats Hummels. And Julian Brandt has put us 2-1 up at Bochum. It was Bellingham that got the ball in there first before Hoffman. Played it to Hummels. Hummels took a few touches. Got the ball out of his feet. Played it across to Brandt in the air. And then on the volley, Brandt smashes it past the goalkeeper and makes it 2-1 Dortmund. It's Bellingham now on the halfway line, moving forward with the ball. Finds Adeyemi on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side even. Haller not down. Bellingham is through. It's Bellingham. And there's some good defending from Bochum there. Goralski eventually getting it cleared. And Sewell has been caught in possession at Tassano for Bochum. And Nicholas Sewell needs to be... He needs to have a word with himself after that. Just dawdling on the ball in defence. Tassano pouncing on it and making him pay and making it 2 all. Look at him here. He thinks he's got all the time in the world trying to be clever, doing little flicks and stuff. And then Asano gets in there and he just dinks it past Kobel in the Dortmund goal and makes it 2 all. We've got to an hour of the game played now. We're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take Sebastian Haller off. We'll bring on Makoku up front just for a, a bit of a change um, up there. He's he's looking motivated as well, so hopefully he can do something. We'll switch him up to his favourite advanced forward on attacking rule as well. And we're gonna withdraw Emery Chan as well. Bring on Salih Ojkan. In centre midfield is the ball winner midfielder. Throw in just inside their own half. It's Yanko. Gets the ball back from the throw in. Long ball forward from him. Looking for Asano. He's got one already. We need no defensive mistakes here. Hummels. He does well to sweep that up. And now Salah Erzkan can come forward with it. He finds Marlin on the left-hand side just inside the bottom half. Now Salah Erzkan getting the ball back from that tackle. Bellingham moving forward with it. The box-to-box -box midfielder. Plays a through ball through. It's blocked by Heinz. And he manages to get that cleared. But only as far as Schlotterbeck. And now Salah Erskin can bring it forward once more. Chip ball over the top. Looking to get over the defence. But didn't. And now Hoffman has it for Bochum. Advancing past the halfway line. Into our half now. It's Hoffman. Salah Ozkan. That's a tackle from behind. And I think he might get sent off for that. I think this could be us down at 10 men. Salah Ozkan. He's been on the field for the grand total of, what, 13 minutes? And he's been sent off. So we're going to have to drop Brandt down to centre midfield alongside Bellingham. We'll make Brandt an advanced playmaker on support. Bellingham's going to have to switch to being the, the ball winner midfielder. Marlin's looking a bit anxious out there. I mean, Bellingham's looking aggressive as well, which isn't great. Reina is going to 
come onto the field for Marlon at attacking left midfield. And as we don't have any stoppages left, I might as well use the last substitution and we'll take Ryerson off for Wolf. Ryerson not having the best of games at right back today. So free kick very late on, just under five minutes to go. It's Brandt, through ball to Reina. Can we get a winner very late on? It's Reina with a shot and it's saved by the keeper. But only cleared as far as Schlotterbeck. Now Schlotterbeck with a chance to get a ball in. Possibly pulls it back to Julian Brandt. And he's dispossessed. And the clock is running down. Now we've got five minutes of injury time. Can we grab a winner? Or are we going to be held as Dortmund were in real life? We're going to be held. It's 2-2. Two, two. We've scored one more goal each compared to both sides in real life. But it has ended in a draw. So that result means we are now two points clear of Bayern. But they do have a game in hand. That game in hand is against... Hertha Berlin, who they beat 2-0 in real life. So let's see if they can recreate that in the game. Well, Bayern have done a bit better than real life. They've ended up beating Hertha by five goals to nil. So an extra three goals on top of what they got, which sends them back up to the top of the table. One, one point clear of us. So taking a look at the real table on the left-hand side and the in-game table on, on the right-hand side, you can see that it's not much different to real life in terms of Bayern and Dortmund. So we are one point behind Bayern. They have three goals better off goal difference than they did in real life. The interesting stories are that Freiburg of Leapfrog Union Berlin compared to real life and Stuttgart are in the bottom three rather than Bochum being in 16th place. Stuttgart only drawing against Mönchengladbach in game, whereas they, they won 2-1 in real life. So it's match day 31 in the Bundesliga. In real life, Bayern beat Werder Bremen by two goals to one in this game week. We don't play until the Sunday, so let's see how Bayern do. And Bayern have gone and 1-3-1, so improved their goal difference even more. So that Bayern result means that they are now four points ahead of us, but we do have this game in hand. This is against Wolfsburg. We beat them 6-0, or Dortmund beat them 6-0, I should say, in real life. I'd be very happy with, with that result. Just a win, though, would be very nice indeed. So just the one change made to the starting lineup from the last game. Marius Wolf, I'm bringing in at right back in place of Julian Rice, and he didn't do well last time out. Paslak didn't do well at left back either, but we don't have much of an alternative for him as Rafael Guerrero is still not fully fit. Mahmoud Dahoud joins the bench in place of, I've forgotten his name, what is it? Salah Özkan, who is obviously suspended after picking up that red card. Through ball intercepted nicely by Wolf, the man who's just been brought into the team today. And now Emre Chan with the ball forward to Marlon. Marlon with a through ball to Haller. Haller just holding the ball up nicely. Brilliant through ball to Adeyemi. It's Adeyemi. He chips it past the goalkeeper and the referee has pulled it back for an offside. Now wind, they've broken through our press. That's a great challenge from Julian Brandt. Now Bellingham plays that to Adeyemi. Adeyemi with a through ball looking for Haller headed away by Lacroix, but it comes back to Adeyemi. Now bad touch from him. Gets lucky with the deflection and it falls to Wolf. Now it's Julian Brandt once more on the right-hand side. Can he get across into the box for Haller? It's Brandt with the ball in. Haller's there with a the header and that's just wide from Sebastian Haller. This is a, a, a great start from us. A lot better start than the game against Bochum. It's Emery Chan now. Long ball down the right-hand side to Adeyemi, and Adeyemi comes inside. Plays a lovely pass through to Julian Brandt, and it's a great save from Castiles. Brandt with the corner from the right-hand side. Can he produce something here? Ball into Haller, it's headed away by Lacroix. Paslak coming forward with it, and that turns to nothing. But we've got another corner. It's Brandt from the opposite side this time. It's a header. I don't know who it was from. It's off the bar, and it's cleared, and Brandt has collected it once more. Bellingham now on the edge of the box. To Adeyemi in some space on the right-hand side. He cuts inside and he fires that way too high over the goal. Wind with the ball through to the Mecha. Now this could be a first chance of the game for Wolfsburg. It's Svanberg. Pass that makes a tackle but it falls to Baku. Baku with a shot. It's deflected off Schlotterbeck. And Wind is there with a header. And that is off the bar and out for a goal kick. So half time here and it was 3-0 at this stage in real life. So uh, we're not doing as well as the real life Dortmund team currently. But we've still got a second half to make up for it. Uh, a couple of poor performers, really. Emre Chan and Marlon at left wing. So we're, we're going to take them off. We're going to bring on... I was going to bring on Dahoud for Emre Chan. I'm not sure about that. He's looking nervous. But we'll bring on Gio Reyna for, for Marlon at left wing. We'll, we'll bring on Dahoud as well for Chan. We'll see if we can cheer him up in the, in the little team talk. We'll stick him as a, an advanced playmaker on support. We'll move Bellingham to a ball winner midfielder on support. Team talk didn't work for Dahoud. He's still nervous, but hopefully he can put on a display out there. Uh, it's a short goal kick from the back to start this highlight. And the ball's played forward to Adeyemi. He brings it down nicely. Comes inside with the ball. Adeyemi switches it to the left towards Gio Reyna. 
who plays it back to Paslak, back to Reiner. Reiner in the box needs to pull it across goal. He does. It's cleared away by Arnold, but Wolf is coming in at the back post. It's Wolf with the shot, and Marius Wolf has got the opening goal of the game. The man that didn't start the last game but has come in today has got us off the mark. Gio Reiner with a ball in with a bit too much on it. I think he was looking for Adeyemi. It was cleared by Arnold, came to Wolf, who managed a free run into the box, and then a great finish from quite a tight angle to get us. 1-0 up against Wolfsburg. Adeyemi and Brandt are both looking a bit tired out there now with uh, just under 20 minutes to go. We're going to keep Adeyemi on for the time being. We're going to take off Julian Brandt and we'll bring on Marco Royce in attacking centre of the field as he's, he's looking delighted, apparently. And then what we'll actually do is we're going to switch Royce to the left wing. Reina's going to play in the centre of the attacking midfield line and we're going to put him as a, a shadow striker on attack. Corner. Can we get a second? It's Royce to take it from the right-hand side. Towards Sula with the header, and Nicholas Sula has put us two up with just over 15 minutes to go. And it looks like we're on course for a victory, our first victory in charge of Dortmund. A great way that it'll be to end the episode if we can hold on to this. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get the six goals that Dortmund scored in real life, but a 2 0 win is just as good. Unless the, the season ends with us level on points with Dortmund, with Bayern, in which case uh, it, it wouldn't be great. But considering their goal differences, almost. 30 more? No, yeah, tw 25. It's about 25, isn't it? 24 goals more than us. It's not very likely we're going to get anywhere near their goal difference. But we could have an opportunity to get a third here. It's at a Yemi to Rayner. Now Royce through to Haller. It's Haller through on goal. And it's three. Marco Royce and Gio Rayner have just woken this game up for us after coming off the bench with just under 20 minutes to go. It was Bellingham with a nice ball to Yemi. First time pass from him to Rayner. Rayner seeing Royce there in tons of space who finds a beautiful ball to Haller and Haller can go round the keeper and make it 3-0. And there is the full-time whistle. It's half the scoreline of real life, but it's still a 3-0 victory. So let's take a look before we end the episode at the side-by-side -side of the league tables after match day 31 of the Bundesliga. So you'll see that we are on identical points as in real life. So we're on 64, Bayern on 65, but the top four looks a little bit different. So Leipzig are actually down in fifth rather than third. And Union Berlin are up in third instead of fourth. Freiburg, well, they're up in fourth instead of fifth. So it's all change in the European places compared to real life. Down at the bottom, Bochum are doing a bit better than in reality. They're up in 15th instead of 17th. Stuttgart down in 16th, which is where they were in real life. But Schalke, however, missed them out. Schalke were 15th at this stage in real life. They're rock bottom of the table currently in game. So that is it for episode one of Rewriting History with Borussia Dortmund. Next episode, we'll do the final three league games of the season against Borussia Mönchengladbach, Augsburg and Mainz. We are relying on the same thing as Dortmund were relying on at this stage in real life, Bayern to drop points. Now in real life, Bayern did drop points in the penultimate game of the season. They played Leipzig the same time as we played Augsburg. So there's still hope there. But if you are enjoying this save, Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Hit the notification bell to stay notified and I'll see you next time.